This is part six in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair this MADAS mechanical calculator. The repair of the actual calculator mechanism is coming along quite nicely. Um, I can now uh, add, subtract, multiply and divide. And um, I just now need to start doing some more uh, in-depth testing. There is one issue on here that I need to try and resolve, but I'll come back to that in a later video. Um, but because I want to now start doing some more meaningful tests on functions such as division, it does mean that um, the calculator has to be rotated many times, maybe hundreds of times or thousands of times to complete the calculation. And there isn't a mechanical or manual uh, way of driving this. It's, all, it's electric, it's driven by a motor. And um, because I don't want to have to turn uh, this gear um, using my fingers thousands of times uh, I want to try and get the motor drive working so we'll put the repair of the calculator on hold for a short time and we'll focus on getting the uh, motor working. So it's a very simple motor I think it's a series uh, wound motor so we've got the rotor and the stator wound in series and the wiring is very straightforward there is this mechanical a contact system that sits underneath the back end of the calculator and when you pe uh, press the plunger down to start a calculation it pushes this um, brass bar down onto these two contacts here you can see they're cleaning up they're supposed to be uh, clean brass it uh, shorts them together and that should start up the motor there is also the wiring that comes up through this hole and it should go to a switch the original switch is missing but the owner of this calculator has managed to source what should be a fairly good uh, drop-in replacement. I say drop-in, it doesn't actually fit at the moment. Uh, I'll need to drill and tap a couple of uh, new holes for it and find some uh, sensible way to connect it. Um, but it does look the part. It looks very similar to the switch that was originally fitted to this machine and it's a uh, perfect diameter so it should look very good and authentic. Uh, the wiring for this is very straightforward. This switch is just wired directly across the uh, auto switch and that's just so that you can run the machine if you can't for some reason uh, press down the plunger. Sometimes the uh, calculator will put itself into a state where you can't press the plunger down but you still need to rotate it. Uh, in this case you just flick on the uh, switch and it will then drive the uh, calculator uh, or break something, whichever comes first. Um, but it should, in theory, free up the calculator so you can then start using the uh, auto function again. Uh, I don't want to try powering this up for two reasons. Um, the main one is because very old wiring and the insulation on this wiring is uh, starting to flake and break off and uh, almost certainly it will short out and um, bad things would happen. Um, but I just want to test the motor and see if we're getting anything at all. Um, I'm guessing the motor uh, still works simply because the belt on the calculator was broken. So most likely this motor was running when that happened and the calculator was taken out of service. So hopefully this um, should be fairly easy to get working. I'll take it apart, we'll have a look at it, so I suspect, I'm hoping it is just dirty or stuck brushes and the commutator needs cleaning. Um, but we'll measure it and see if we're getting any uh, conductivity through the motor at all. And now it's uh, showing as open circuit. So this, these wires are twisted together, so um, Effectively, we should be getting a, a, a couple of K uh, of winding resistance showing, but there's nothing. So, um, hopefully, it's not burnt out. Uh, I suspect it is just brushes. So, let's get this taken apart. The first thing we'll do is separate the bracket from the motor. So, these should come apart uh, hopefully fairly easily. Maybe a bit too easy. So again, I'm suspecting somebody's had this apart. These were very loose. So let's just measure again, see if it was just the case of a loose screw. I have quite a few of those, so people tell me, but uh, 
let's see what we find here. So, no, that's just me, that's just my body resistance showing, but uh, yeah, the motor's still showing as uh, open circuit. Okay, let's uh, take it apart and see what we can find. The first thing I want to do is uh, remove the governor off the end. This is purely mechanical, there is no electrical connections to this governor. It's a centrifugal brake in effect, and the reason this is here is uh, if the motor over speeds, if the belt brakes, or if uh, there's such a light load because of the mode the calculator's in that the motor would over speed, uh, these two brake shoes uh, fly out or start to fly out and um, they start to rub on the inside of the brake drum, uh, drum and stop it um, from running away and going too fast. So first thing I want to do is try and get this out. So we'll loosen the grub screw and see if we can get that pulled out. Okay, well luckily that wasn't too tight and now we'll see if we can pull this out. Not much to get hold of, but uh, Okay, so as you can see, very simple assembly. Uh, shouldn't really be covered in grease, but uh, we'll clean that out. The motor does spin quite freely, by the way, so it's um, looking like there's nothing particularly seriously wrong with it. Um, we may have to rewind it if it is open circuit, but uh, as I say, I somehow suspect it won't be. Uh, these two. Um, Big thumb screws are uh, oilers or greasers, so what you do is you pack these holes with grease and then as you screw this down it forces grease down into the uh, bearings. Um, I need to clean these out and uh, repack them. Okay, I'll take out the brushes. Okay, well this one is stuck, I can't get it to uh, come out, so hopefully we'll be able to get that one out once we get the rotor freed up. And we'll try the other one. I'll try pushing it up from the bottom. And that one luckily has come out. So uh, we've got one side out, the other one's stuck in there, but um, hopefully we can get it out once we get the rotor pulled out. Next thing is I need to try and get the pulley off this end of the motor. And then we have the pulley. And the next thing I can do is take the screws out that hold the two parts of the motor together. And before I do this, I want to make sure that I can properly realign this. So luckily in this case, we have the two greasers that are uh, in line with the tag, so I can use that as a reference when I come to reassemble. So now I need to try and separate the two halves of the motor. I want to avoid breaking the brush that's still stuck in there, so I just want to see if I can just gently push that out of the way. Okay, so it has moved, so it's not stuck fast. And then we'll see if we can free up this end of the motor. Okay, so it's moved slightly. I should be able to pop this cap completely off, which I can. Um, now, of course, this back end comes off, the front end doesn't, which is a bit unfortunate because the um, brush caps are in this end, and of course, they'll be connected to wires that go into the motor. Uh, so what I need to do is pull this um, end cap off the shaft and hopefully the wires will be long enough to allow me to uh, move it out of the way and get the rotor out. So I don't want the rotor to come out at the moment. And luckily the wires are quite nice and long. Uh, and also we need to keep an eye on how many of these washers there are at either end. I can see there's a lot of wear in this uh, commutator here so I might have to uh, redress that on the lathe. Uh, but we don't want to lose these spaces, uh, otherwise um, we, can we could end up with the, the motor binding up or uh, there being too much end play. So we'll carefully move these out of the way and I should be able to pull the rotor out, which I can. So incredibly dirty. 
does look rather black so I'm hoping it's not burnt out. It could just be tar, they used to cover these uh, in tar so um, it does look a bit too even to be burnt and it's not flaking off so I'm hoping that's just the tar they used to cover it. Okay and we'll look inside here again no sign of burning here. I'm, I'm looking at the windings you probably can't see it on the camera but some of the windings exposed down here and it does look once I've cleaned all the dust off it does look very nice and clean and uh, shiny so it's looking quite promising. Now I will need to look at the wires on this and possibly replace some of the wires where they come out of the motor and uh, these don't look too bad they're a bit frayed but um, that one's not actually used so the two that are in use actually look okay it's the ones on the bracket that will need replacing so okay it doesn't look too bad it just needs a very good clean okay so what I'm going to do now is take these parts over to the workshop um, give them a good clean and um, then look at uh, testing them and see if we can figure out uh, what's going on what I'll do with this is um, there's quite a, a, a step warning to it so I'll try to clean this up as best I can I don't want to go too far with it because I don't know how uh, much copper there is on this but I do need to clean this up it, um, it would uh, very quickly destroy the brushes if we try to run it this way um, but what I will do is take uh, these shims off to make sure that we uh, don't lose them and a small one on the back end and we'll just check to make sure that none are stuck to the inside of the motor and they're not okay so I'll get this taken over to workshop get everything cleaned up and um, see what condition the motor is actually in okay so I've cleaned and degreased everything uh, I've given everything a good uh, check look for shorts uh, anything that was uh, corroded and uh, it seems like the motor is in fairly good condition now the commutator was in very poor state so I have uh, refinished that um, luckily it has a center in the end of the uh, shaft so it was quite easy to set it up between centers to get a very good uh, finish um, had to take off about 0.3 millimeters on the side of the groove uh, obviously that's not the active part but um, once it got down to the wear it was only out of round by about 0.03 millimeters so it was quite easy to uh, machine back and polish up I also polished the uh, bearing surfaces these are bush bearings and not, not roller bearings so it is important these uh, surfaces are nice and clean so I polished those up as well and um, gave it a good clean and that seems to have come up quite nicely cleaned the other parts so we've got the uh, regulator or over speed brake and uh, that's come up nice and clean as well uh, cleaned up the pulley it's got a few scores in it but um, not too bad so that came up quite nicely uh, de uh, greased the uh, greases so these are normally packed with grease there's a kind of spring in the wick in here but uh, it was just full of solid pack grease so I've uh, cleaned those two out and I've cleaned the brushes plenty of life in these they're nice and long so I don't need to worry about replacing them incidentally if you have a motor like this and you can't find the right brushes it is quite easy to machine these on a lathe just start with a much bigger brush and uh, as long as you take it slow and you're careful you can machine them you just need to make sure you get the right uh, grade of uh, brush material okay uh, as I say check the motor no shorts looked at how it's wide up and it is uh, indeed series wound so it's actually wound like uh, this and uh, there is a spare uh, connector uh, although this looks like a brush it's not it's just a, a block of plastic with a screw in it it's just a blanking plug um, so that's for another feature of the motor or um, some other feature on the machine that's uh, not used but um, certainly uh, this doesn't go anywhere so the next thing I want to do is reassemble so we'll start by putting the spacers back onto the uh, armature 
Okay, so I haven't yet re-greased the motor. What I'm going to do just for test purposes is just put a bit of uh, oil on here and um, just in case I need to take it apart, I don't want grease everywhere. So let's do a quick uh, clean. Okay, bit of oil. Okay, so the end cap's in place. I'm just checking as I'm doing this that the wires going to the brush holders are in their proper location so they're not going to move and foul on the uh, moving armature. And uh, it looks fine where they are, so I can now refit the screws. Okay, so the end cap's in place, and if I've done this correctly, it should spin quite freely, which it does, and there should be no danger of the uh, wires going to the brush holders fouling on the moving armature, and that looks fine on both sides. So what I can do now is refit the brushes. I'll leave the greases out for now, I don't need to refit those at the moment. I just want to see if the motor will actually run. So when I refit these, we should get some continuity if the uh, motor hasn't burnt out and hopefully not too little indicating that there aren't any shorts on any of the windings so when you fit these on these motors they don't screw all the way down uh, there's a tendency when you find these these have been screwed right to the bottom that's what usually damages the uh, brushes it's they're screwed in just far enough to give some tension on the brush spring and normally there should be another cap on the outside, a plastic one. Uh, but it's missing on here, so I might make some up just to... Uh, uh, it keeps dust out, but it also locks that screw in place. So same thing on the other side. It doesn't really matter which way around I get these, because um, I have recut the uh, commutator anyway, so it, um, it will have to rebed itself. Same thing on this side, doesn't need to go all the way down. Make sure the armature still spins, which it does. And we should now be able to measure some continuity between these two wires. So let's get a test meter. And 152 ohms, that sounds about right. What I'll do now is put the um, overspeed brake on and uh, we can then give it a run and see if the motor will actually work. Okay, so just a small grub screw, but there is a recess in the shaft that the screw has to go into. So I need to make sure it lines up properly with that as I fit it. So the screw's not fully tight yet, but I can feel that it will rock side to side and then kind of hit the end of the hole. So I know that the end of the screw's in the hole, and now I can safely tighten it all the way in. That's now fully tight, and there's now no relative motion, so that looks good. And uh, we can now try giving it a run. So I'll just get it connected to the power supply, and we'll see what happens. OK, I've got it connected to the Variac and uh, we'll try and power it up, start off at uh, zero volts and gradually increase the voltage and at some point the motor should start up. I've got it facing this way, it'll be easier to see the overspeed brake spinning than it would the shaft, uh, so hopefully we'll see this start up. OK, so that's fairly promising. It's starting up at about 100 volts. No excessive sparking from the brushes. 
Okay, so what I intend to do is run it at low speed for um, an hour or so, let the brushes bed in, I'll then turn the voltage up, make sure the other speed brake works, and then I'll check for um, any other heating and uh, any leakage to ground. And assuming that it works, we can start looking at refitting this to the mounting bracket. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next, I'll show what I intend to do um, with this bracket, modifying it for the switch. We'll reassemble it, get the motor fitted back onto it, and then we'll try reassembling the calculator body and um, see what we can do about replacing the missing gear and the drive belt.